So, um, yeah, I went quickly through the agenda. Hopefully you heard some of it, but again, these are the major points we'll be looking at. CQRS and event sourcing, the Axon technology stack, the upper bindings for it, and some developer extractions that might be useful. So, who am I? I'm a senior solutions architect with Exonic, and uh, we help clients, or I do, um, build event-driven systems based on CQRS and event sourcing, something that we offer through our tech stack, which we'll be looking at a little bit more shortly. Please reach out to me if you have any questions via mail or LinkedIn. Um, CQRS, let's start there. This is uh, basically an architectural pattern which separates command processing and queries, requesting information or the system state. Something you might be familiar with because it's quite common or uh, a lot of people have at least heard about it. So if you try to visualize it, we might envision it as having two different parts of our system. Again, one for processing commands, where we express intent to change the state of the system. And then we have a separate part on the right that has to do with requesting information about the system. What has happened after a state change? We do that through queries. And if we've name these parts, command model and projections, and fill in a little bit of graphics, we can see that these commands, the in, uh, intent to exchange state in our system, operate on some data model that is specifically tailored towards commands. So we uh, change state by applying commands to a command model. And likewise, on the query side or read side, we call them projections, separate data models that are specifically optimized for information retrieval or responding to specific queries. Now, what brings these two sites together is something we call events. So anything that is processed on the command side yields an event that represents change in system state, and that is um, propagated over to the projection side where we update these projections that we later can query. So if we take the notion of commands, events, and queries, and think of building systems using a message-driven approach, using these types of messages, we have, again, commands, events, and queries, three different kinds of messages that have different semantics. So commands are quite simple. You're sending a message that again expresses intent, changing system state, and the target is a specific command handler, and only one, where the command is processed, and if that thing is successful, the caller is simply acknowledged of that fact. Events, again, the outcome of processing a command is an event, so events are simply that. This was successful, here is something that represents the change in system state, and whoever listens for it, well, will receive it. Typical pub sub semantic. And then queries. So when events are streamed over or distributed over to the read side where we update projections, we can use query messages to one or more query handlers that may provide us with responses that are tailored or specific to this query. So if we embrace CQRS and these types of messages, we can use this approach for some interesting uh, scenarios, which we'll get into later. Um, event sourcing, often used in combination with CQRS. So let's look back at these different data models on the command side and on the query side. So we can see that it might have separate data stores. And as we apply a command to the command side, we'll get an event that is appended to some log or a sequence or a stream of events that is subsequently propagated over to the query side, again, to update some projection or that we would like to query. So this is what we typically refer to as event streaming. Now, if we make a slight modification, namely removing that data store for the command side, 
and add another arrow, we get what is called event sourcing. Basically, the data model for the command side is now all the events that have been appended to the se sequence of events that we, that we manage. So not only are we appending event and distributing, distributing them over to the query side, we're also using the history of all events as the data model for the command side. We're sourcing them to make a determination about what the next event will be given a certain command. That is what the system state change will be. And the sourcing of these events is basically what gives rise to the name event sourcing. So it's important to keep these two terms separate because they do not mean the same thing, but they go hand in hand. So CRS and event sourcing is something that we support in the Axon technology stack because you need some plumbing, both in terms of developer support and infrastructure resources to make CRS and event sourcing viable. So, in short, the Axon's tech stack has some components to it. The native event store, where we store these events, are uh, realized through Axon server. And that is not only an event store, but also the routing of these messages. So it's a message router for commands, events, and queries. So messaging and storing of events is part of Axon server. We have a JVM-based framework for allowing people to build these types of application. Um, again, using something called Axon Framework, but that's if you're JVM-based. If you're not, well, then we have another component called Axon Synapse, which allows you to build these applications, utilize messaging and event sourcing from any language or platform. That will be the one component that is of interest to us today. And then we have some interesting tools for observability, et cetera. But the focus here is Axon Server and Axon Sinus that together bring or offer CQRS messaging and event sourcing capabilities. And that's what we would like to interface with from Dapper. So just to look a little bit closer at this Axon Synapse, Synapse component, it communicates with Axon Server, the event store, and the messaging logic through a separate channel, you might say, gRPC. And on the left side, where you'll find the Dapper component, we have HTTP-based communication, meaning anything that wants to send commands, events, and queries, or receive them, they initiate that through, uh, uh, yeah, they do that towards Axon Synapse registering for those types of messages, and that's what they will be able to receive and send. And then Axon Sinus handles everything towards Axon Server, meaning flow control, concurrency control, uh, sequential processing guarantees, and a whole lot more. But our focus, again, is interfacing with Axon Sinus, meaning it goes into the realm of Dapper where we would like to enable this from any language or platform. And we do have a lot of clients that are interested in or are already using Dapper. They are already using or will be using the Axon technology stack, but there is a missing link, which is what we are trying to uh, offer here. So what does it mean to uh, bring support for these capabilities in Dapper? Well, the only viable option right now, of course, is the go-to option is to create a separate component. There is no building block, even though I just heard that there are some proposals for opening up for different kinds of stores, and event stores are among them. I saw in the open issue on GitHub, so maybe that's something to look forward to in the future. But for now, we have to build a custom component for these capabilities. What are the requirements that we have in um, implementing this kind of component? Well, we must be able to register handlers for these types of messages. So if our Dapper application is supposed to handle any of these, well, it needs to tell Axon Synapse that I'm uh, available and I'm able to do so. Likewise, should applications, Dapper applications 
send command and query messages. They should be able to do so. Not events, though, necessarily. That's why it's uh, not part of this sentence. So sending command and query messages only while registering to handle all three types of messages. Now, if you receive a command, event, or query message in your DAP application, you do the requisite processing that you need. But when you handle commands, that's when you update the event store. That's when you need to append an event to the event store. But since we also saw that event sourcing utilizes all prior events to produce a new event, we need to be able to read or source these prior events. So handling commands requires a little bit of special logic that our component must support as well. And we're also going to assume that in a DAP application, we'll have some mechanism because we're receiving messages or a message. It might be a command event or query. So somewhere in the DAP application as part of something that is provided or implemented um, in a custom fashion, you should be able to dispatch commands, events, and queries to their proper destinations in your code and process them there. But we'll just assume that that exists. But that's in the developer abstraction that is needed. So let's look at the interactions between DAP applications, this component, and the Axon resources. So we'll assume that we've implemented an Axon Science component that supports these prior stated requirements. We have two applications in Dapper that would like to utilize messaging for CQRS and uh, event sourcing. Let's start with commands, sending and handling commands. So we'll just say that this particular application is intending to send a command to some destination, to a singular destination. So the operation is to send a command, and the command will be basically the message that uh, entails the name of the command and some payload or part of the payload that indicates where it should be routed. An Axon server is very, very basic when it comes to routing, intentionally so. It's a sort of stereotyp stereotypical routing based on the command type, the name of it or the kind, and some ID or identifier that enables the routing to a proper destination. So we can see that this command is being sent by the Dapper app A via the Synapse component. It interfaces with Axon Synapse, and Axon Synapse in turn via its own gRPC channel, make sure to let Axon Server know that there's a command that needs to be routed, in this case, to my app B, a second Dapper application. Axon Server has a command handler registered, something that my app B previously did. So it knows where, to, where that command handler is for this particular command with this particular routing key. And so, it will make sure that the command gets routed properly and received by the Dapper application. Again, there will be just a message being received and some logic will dispatch it to the actual command handler that was registered and will process this command. So this is basically how we would route the command from my app A to my app B. But command handling, as we saw, is not that simple or straightforward. Once the command has been received, we need to do something in addition to it. So we will need to read the prior events that make sense for handling this command. And thus, we need to call Axon Synapse, make sure that we can get events for what is sometimes called an aggregate. Think of it as it might be representing an entity in your business domain, or more generally, a transactional consistency boundary, using some fancy words there. Uh, but basically, there is something that has an event stream that we can source, and we'll be able to use that when we then process the command that we received. Now, if processing the command is successful, 
we need to append an event to the event store. So we should be able to invoke this operation on a component to make sure that the event that we did get from pressing the command is appended to the event store. So first we read or source the events, then we, then we process the command, we'll get an event as a result, as an outcome, that gets appended to the event store. And in addition to that, the event might get routed, distributed to any event handlers out there. For example, we might have an event handler in my app B or in my app C or whatever other DAP applications that are running. And this event that we're, we'll be receiving through the component is again used to update a projection, the read side of CQRS. I'm not showing queries here, but I hope you sort of get the idea that sending a query message between DAP applications and processing a, a query message is quite straightforward given what we've seen here. But the important part, of course, here is routing commands, using Axon Signers, Axon Server, and use this Axon Signers component as the linking bridge. And once we've processed command using some event store interfacing, we can then uh, route that event that was yielded to any event handlers that are, are, are interested. So that's sort of the basic layout of what the Axon Science component is supposed to do and can do. But as we already saw, that might not be enough. Um, we need some developer abstraction, again, for dispatching messages of different types internally in your DAP application, just as convenience for developers. So that's my, something we would probably would like to provide. But more interestingly, perhaps, is if you're using messages for this type of communication between your DAP applications, there is a property you can use, which has an analogous, um, or it, it is present analogously in service invocation, which is location transparency. So with messages, you don't really know where they end up. That's sort of the whole point. With, for example, with events, as you publish them, you have subscribers or event handlers, one or many, wherever they might be, with the same goes for commands and queries. You're sending a command, whether it's routed within a process or across network boundaries, that's a, for, as a caller or a sender of these messages, you're none the wiser. That's purposefully so. Meaning you can start building a application or um, mo modular monolith, if you will, um, and then as you see fit, when the need arises, you can extract and scale parts of your system independently. And since we're using messages and you're building Dapper microservices this way, or extracting them into Dapper microservices, your calling code remains the same because using location transparency, again, how messages are, were routed within a monolith or between microservices, the callers, um, API, if you will, remains the same in how they use it. But this sort of implies an interesting problem, which is what happens if you have a DAP replication that is sending a command to a destination, a command handler that is, is present within the same process. Normally, again, we saw you, you're sending the command out to, to the component and to Axon Synapse. But that's unnecessary if you're, everything is co-located, so to speak, in one process. So an additional abstraction could be a message bus, like command bus here for commands. So if you're sending a command prior to that, if you do have a command handler in the same process, it will have to register with the command bus saying, here I am, I'm present. The command bus would remotely register as well with the Axon signups because commands might be coming in from other places uh, remotely. But once you have registered locally as well as remotely and you're sending a command, the command bus will be able to see, do I have a local route available? If so, just send a message on, send a command on to the command handler. 
or it will have to, as we saw, send it using that operation to the Axon Science component. But this type of abstraction makes things a lot easier. It enables location, uh, location transparency in practice. So you could build a modular monolith, which is actually something we recommend if you don't have obvious microservices needs from the get-go. But then as you progress and you're building out your system and you, the need arises, these abstractions come into play and allow for easy extraction and scale of your parts of your system. Um, but again, this would be something that would be have to be pro provided on top of the components, so to speak. So, uh, in summary, we have seen that CKRS and event sourcing, at least as we hear from our clients, but we're, what we're basing our offering on is quite useful, um, especially if you want to store the state of your system as a single source of truth through these events. There is no present building block for it in, in Dapper, so you're using a binding to support it. And that's what we have been looking at and will be completing as a component soon. And this will give you the requisite um, both infrastructure components, Axon Server and Axon Synapse, as well as the developer abstractions to be able to use messaging, Axon messaging, and event sourcing in your own Dapper applications. So, Given this, again, the component is still a work in progress, but it's working rather well. Uh, but there are a few things like these developer abstractions that need to be off, uh, completed to make it make it viable, I think. These developer abstractions, again, will be language specific, but much as we have Dapper SDKs for various languages, these abstractions will not be that difficult to, to provide for uh, yeah, the various languages that might be of interest. And uh, yeah, so that will be hopefully coming soon. And in the meantime, uh, please do have a look at our tech stack and maybe specifically Axon Synapse or reach out to me um, if you want to carry on the conversation. So thank you very much. You're still muted, Mark. I see you moving, but we can't hear you. Yes, thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Mark. And um, I'm pretty curious about the the, the custom uh, component that, that you wrote, right? It's, it's like a pluggable component, right, in, in Dapper terms. Yeah, so we're, um, I'm not sure which one, if we should offer both, um, because components can be, again, built in in the Dapper demo, but offered as a pluggable version. We'll probably do both. Um, so that's why it's going to take a little bit of extra time just to make it uh, Make that available. Yeah, but yeah, so, so, so it's, it's, on, on, anyway. it's on the roadmap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all right. Yeah, no, because yeah, th there's not a lot of talk about pluggable components. I think in, in, in general, it's a bit. I think it's a bit of a hidden gem in in Dapper. Yeah, uh, but yeah, definitely a very powerful feature. You know, you, you can either make a combination of existing uh, APIs and you use it in a component, or yeah, make a completely custom one to connect to a different backend. So yeah, interesting to to see where this goes. Hmm. Cool. Right. Um, do we have any questions for you in the chat? Um, uh, I don't think so. Not too many. No, no, not specific for this session. I think it's more about running it on Kubernetes. Need, yeah? So this is no. One person, uh, Ravi, did ask in the chat here. Like, is there a list of custom Dapper components? I don't think there's a custom component registry outside of the ones that Dapper provides in the Contrib repo. Yeah, but um, but that could be an interesting thing. Uh, you know, folks in the community are interested in like sharing some of the things that they've built and putting them in a, a consolidated place. Like that could be, that could be something that we could look into. Yeah, we should definitely do that in it. It could also be a, a nice inspiration of people who want to build these things, right? I mean, you might not even want to use it as it is, but if you want to build your own, then there is uh, some nice examples that you can uh, yeah. borrow some code from. So yeah, I think it's a good, a good idea, idea to, to so have such a list. Was actually a question that I had myself. <laughs> <laughs> like exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I built like a pluggable component for what was it for for Superbase I think the Superbase uh, backend store. So uh, yeah, that was was a fun exercise to uh, to do. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll definitely create a repo for that and then and ask everyone to uh, to share their pluggable components there as well. Yeah. Awesome. So thanks for the question, Ravi. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and yeah, th thank you very much for for joining, uh, Mark.
Yep, pleasure to be to be here. Thanks.